Back in 1995, this silly little language called JavaScript was introduced in the Netscape browser. A few years later, in 2009, Node.js, a cross-platform runtime environment for that silly language, was released. Then, in 2020, using all that knowledge from building the Node.js project and leveraging powerful tools such as the Chrome's V8 engine and Rust, a more performant, stable and secure environment called Dina was released. So, in the span of 30 years, that silly little language famously built in 10 days by Brandon Eich got to be the most widely used programming language in the world and enjoys the most complex libraries and tools ecosystem out there. In this video, we'll take a look at the Dina runtime and we'll discuss not only its core features, but also the impact it has on the entire software development space with tools such as Dino Deploy and deployments on the edge. We'll jump right into it by running one of the following commands depending on your operating system. Once Dino is installed, we can simply create a TS file and start working on the code. The first thing you need to know about Dino is that it supports TypeScript out of the box. While JavaScript is pretty powerful, TypeScript is slowly replacing it as a de facto front-end programming language, mostly thanks to the Angular team who really pushed it forward a few years back. In short, if you are not familiar with it, TypeScript builds on top of the flexibility of JavaScript and offers a flexible type system layer on top of it, which simplifies development and collaboration. Besides that, the compile step will allow you to also use various ECMAScript features which are not yet fully adopted, such as the decorators, so all in all, I don't see any reasons to not use TypeScript in 2022. Another great thing about Dino is that it provides the well-known web platform functionalities and follows the web standards. This allows you to use familiar things such as the Fetch API. So, in our example, I'm making a GET request to the Hacker News API to retrieve the most popular stories. A couple of things to mention here. On one hand, know that all the work we are doing is promise-based. This unified way of working with asynchronous methods, by relying on promises on every level of the implementation, is one of the cleanup efforts Dino did to improve the node behavior. Also, note that we are able to use the await keyword on the top level of the script, which allows us to use this feature in the global scope without the need to wrap our code in an async function. In all fairness though, Node also allows you to do this in more recent versions. When developing in Dino, your code will be packed and shipped in a single executable file. This is important to know and we'll get into more details about the groundbreaking aspects of deploying Dino projects in a couple of minutes. For now though, it's enough to know that one of the main advantages of this platform is the seamless solution they came up with to reliably deploy services at scale. If you are involved in backend development, you are probably familiar with all the DevOps headaches associated with building, deploying and scaling your app. There are a wide range of public cloud providers and dedicated servers you can choose to deploy your services as standalone, in a Docker container or even in Kubernetes. In a past video, I talked briefly about the importance of simplicity and efficiency in modern tech solutions and Dino Deploy really does a great job on this front. Back to the code, the top stories fetch call returns a list of story IDs. For each of those, we'll make a sync calls to retrieve the details and, when all the promises are resolved, we'll simply print the story titles in the console. We can use the Dino run command to execute our script. Another selling point for Dino is its focus on security. For instance, you'll have to explicitly give your code permission to do things such as reaching to the network or accessing the file system. Also, keep in mind that whenever an unheld exception is being thrown, the whole process will die. If you are used to working in a Node.js environment, you must be more than familiar with the packet.json file where all your dependencies are being registered. As opposed to this approach, Dino allows you to import third-party libraries directly from your code base. Of course, this can get a little bit messy and difficult to maintain with dependencies spread all around your files, so as a best practice, Dino projects should have a dependency file acting as a central point to import third-party libraries. In our case, I want to be able to send some command line arguments to my script and I can use the parse method from Dino's standard library to make my work easier. Just as an FYI, Dino has a standard library containing modules with no external dependencies closely reviewed by the Dino core team. There are also a wide range of third-party modules you can use and we'll add Oak in our project to handle HTTP requests in just a second. Furthermore, starting with the version 1.15, Dino provides a compatibility mode that allows you to consume code authored for Node.js directly. Back in the index.js file, I can easily parse the command line arguments and extract the number of stories we want to fetch from Hacker News. Then, in a terminal, I can Node run my file again, but this time the count value can be passed in as an argument. Next, let's take a look at how easy it is to convert this code into an HTTP server listening for incoming requests. Back in the dependencies file, 
will import Oak from the DinoLand website. This is a pretty popular and powerful third-party library, which will allow us to listen to HTTP requests and you can find a link to one of my past videos where I'm getting into more details on this topic while building a REST API. Back in our index.ts file, we'll add a router instance and we'll do a little bit of refactoring so that the logic we worked on a bit earlier will be called when a GET call is made to the stories URL. We are doing this for demo purposes, but know that Oak offers support for all the HTTP verbs, working with requests and responses, serialization, and other features feature you would expect from such a framework. Dino is a powerful platform and various interesting projects and libraries are built on top of it. Of note here could also be Fresh.js, an island-based web framework offering just-in-time rendering on the edge with zero configuration needed. So, while still young, Dino already attracts a lot of engineers innovating in this space and the whole environment will probably end up disrupting the dev world just like Node did a few years back. Before discussing Dino Deploy, we'll go ahead and wrap up the implementation by creating an Oak application instance and then hook in the routes object we defined earlier. Our app will listen on the port 8000 for incoming requests and then we can jump into a terminal window, restart our app and then simply send get requests to our new server using curl. So we've seen all these great features Dino has to offer but now it's time to discuss one of the things that really gets me excited. Dino Deploy. As I mentioned earlier, deploying and scaling web apps can easily become a full-time job depending on the tech stack and the tools you are using. AWS and similar services simplify the process over the years, but more recently, platforms as a service such as Netlify or Vercel really move the ball forward for us developers who don't really care about getting into DevOps work. To deploy our small service, go ahead on the dino.com website and create a free account, then log in to see your dashboard. The service is integrated with GitHub, so if your code is pushed out there, we can simply create a new project, select the repository, the branch we want to use for deployment purposes, and add environment variables if those are needed. And that's all you have to do not only to deploy your project on a public URL, but also have that project running on the edge. It was pretty common in the past for CDNs to store static files in multiple locations over the world so that they can serve it to you from the closest location and shave a few milliseconds from the HTTP request response cycle. Dino builds on top of that and distributes the resulting executable file in multiple locations as well so that your API runs in a distributed manner and can be reached from multiple locations around the world. If you found this video useful, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.